Oh, it worked that time. Hello everybody and welcome back to Noia Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noia Dev we're going to talk about how the world changes with you. Let's get into this. So one of the last things that I needed to do uh, for the underworld map here is to flesh out this NPC area. I didn't exactly know how to flesh out this area here. I'm not the greatest environmental designer, but I know I needed something extra here. And uh, playing around with the existing materials in the tile set, I ended up kind of kit bashing together this little campfire here uh, with a mixture of the crushed skull terrain, some of these bricks, and uh, stretching the fire from these uh, torches here. During the player's journey of the underworld here, they will meet a couple of different NPCs, but one in particular, just like the player, is also looking to escape the underworld or die trying. And that is our boy Morb. Here. When the player first comes here to the NPC camp, they will see all of these other little skeletons hanging around the bonfires here and essentially just waiting to pass on. Morb here is sick of waiting and is convinced that the Queen of the Underworld, or who he calls the Sorceress, is the whole reason for why they are still here. And with the player's help, Morb aims to escape the Underworld or die trying. Now, in the past, I had a whole video dedicated to what I call interactable objects, but these objects now have a new function that I had alluded to that was possible, but now have fully fleshed out and is a reality. And that is the ability to hide and show interactable objects based on criteria that the player has met. So let me show you here. There's a number of different criteria that could be met, whether it's level or a specific stat or a specific item that the player has or does not have, as as well as quests that the player has, does not has, are active, or have been completed. Based on these criteria, I can choose to hide or show interactable objects to the player. In this instance, it's when the player accepts the quest from Dan here, he disappears. Now, this isn't a exactly groundbreaking technology when it comes to MMOs, but it is something that is new to Noia. This now means that the player's actions carry real agency within the world of Noia. Now, can this cause issues with other players crowding an NPC that you can't see? Yes. But this happens in other MMOs as well, and so I'm not exactly super broken up about it. So a quick recap on what an interactable object is versus, say, an entity. An entity in Noia has a health bar and inventory and AI and movement, and all of these things must be constantly referenced by the server every single tick. An interactable object is only referenced by the server when it is interacted with by a player. Going back to our disappearing NPCs, the way that I achieve this is whenever the player accomplishes a task or has a change in their stats or level, the area that they are in, let's say the underworld map here, will then pull their current stats and then run through all of the individual interactable objects and see if they should be visible or not. Now one might think that this will cause undue strain on the server and all of these different players running around having completing quests and leveling up and getting new stats would cause a lot of extra checks to be taken at all times, especially with interactable objects that might not even be affected by said change. And you'd be right, that would cause a, a large amount of stress on the server, which is why we're not doing it on the server, we're doing it on the client. When the client detects a change based on quest or level or stat or what have you, it then has a list of all of the interactable objects in the area and can quickly run through those on the client itself. 
Now, leaving this sort of decision making up to the client uh, would be insanity. You never want to leave the decision up to a client as to what they can or cannot interact with. Noya has a trust but verify system. Whether or not an object is visible to the client is one thing. Whether or not the player can interact with it is entirely different. The sprite renderer and collider are disabled on the client. And yes, a person with a cheat engine program can absolutely go to the program and re-enable that sprite renderer and collider and make that object interactable again on the client. But once they click on it, it still has to be verified on the server again whether or not a player can or cannot interact with an object. And if that object was supposed to be invisible and the player sends an interaction command to the server anyway, you better believe that's going to get logged. So now that you know how the process works, let's see what I'm using it for. Our boy Morb here obviously wants to get out of the underworld or die trying, and so he is going to have the player spend their time either collecting weapons or patching up the skellies here that are waiting and essentially form his own little militia. Each time the player completes a task, more skeletons will leave their campfires and form ranks in front of Morb. And once all the tasks are complete, the skelly militia will be standing ready to deploy. And then the player and Morb can assault the sorceress's lair and hopefully escape the underworld alive. So that's it for this week. Uh, if you like what you see and the progress that's being made, go ahead and click that subscribe button and be sure to join the Discord um, so you can see the daily progress. It helps to grow the community and we definitely want to grow a community because empty MMOs are no fun to play. The server is still behind me here and uh, I set a goal to launch by end of month. I've got a couple more quests to figure out and put into the game and I hope the next video is actually uh, alpha launch instructions. So, see you next time. Bye.